get started, I'm going to be cooking two cups of rice. I'm using a medium grain rice. You could also use short grain. I don't suggest long grain rice because it's not sticky enough. Now I'm just going to basically rinse the rice around two to three times. I'm just going to get my hand and mix it around, soak it in the water, and you'll see that the water turns murky. Then I'm just going to pour that out, add more cold water, do the same thing, and just repeat the process. Typically you wanna do this until the water runs clear. I do it around two to three times, it's fine. By the way, what I like to do with the water that I use from rinsing the rice is actually wash my face with it. This rice is not really dirty. It's actually pre-washed, so it's okay to use this water. Now, if you have a dirtier rice or grittier rice, you might wanna rinse it a couple times before you actually use your rice water. But again, that's just what I like to do. I don't like to throw out the water. Okay, so my rice is rinsed. So now I'm just going to add the water, place it into my rice cooker, and let it cook. Okay, so now that my rice is done, I'm just going to move it and mix it around, and eventually I am going to place it in a bowl. I'm going to be using around six cups of rice. I haven't actually measured it, but when I make two cups of rice, I usually get around six to seven kimbap rolls. So now I'm going to season the rice. I have a tablespoon of rice vinegar, a teaspoon of sugar and a half teaspoon of salt. I'm going to dissolve that in the vinegar and just season it with the rice and just give it a mix. I'm also going to be adding some sesame oil. I typically don't measure it, but I would say a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of sesame oil. And again, just give the rice a mix. Okay, so my rice is prepared, it's seasoned, but it is still warm and you do not wanna work with the hot or warm rice. So I'm going to cover the rice and allow it to cool. And you want to make sure that you cover it because if you just leave it open, then it'll dry out. So make sure you cover it with a lid. I'm using cling wrap and I'm just gonna set it on the counter for it to cool. Okay, so now I am going to work on my other ingredients. I'm using one medium to large carrot and I will julienne this carrot into, you know, matchsticks. I also want to mention that the, the ingredients that I'm using today, they're very versatile. Sometimes I like to use different types of meat or protein. Um, I like to add kimchi, sometimes seafood, but today I'm doing ham and cheese. So the carrots are done. Now I'm going to be using yellow pickled radish. This is a Korean uh, pickled radish and you want to cut those in, in strips lengthwise. So I'm just going to cut part of it and kind of eyeball what the length should be as far as rolling it into my kimbap roll. And the way I like to store it is I pour whatever juices are left in the package and then I slice the little, uh, the piece that I cut off. And we actually like to also eat this as just a side dish with noodles, black bean noodles. Uh, it's very delicious. So here you go. And now I'm just going to cut the other piece in half and then cut long strips. Okay, so I've cut several strips. I'm going to store the rest back into this container and we will eat this later. So now I'm going to move on to the next ingredient. What I'm going to be doing next is cutting some ham. Again, you can use the meat of your choice. I love to make ground meat seasoned like bulgogi style, but today my kid requested ham and cheese, so that's what we're doing. So again, just like the pickled radish, I'm going to cut long strips. Ultimately, you want everything to be, you know, in strips because you're going to place it inside your roll. So I have enough ham there. I'm going to do the same with cheddar cheese. Again, you can play, replace or substitute the ham and cheese with the protein of your choice. Sometimes if I don't have any meat, I actually season mushrooms like bulgogi style with soy, sugar, and ginger and garlic. 
and just kind of stir fry them and you know we kind of have a vegetarian version of this so here everything is cut into strips and i still have several other ingredients next i am going to show you how i like to do spinach here i had a six ounce container of spinach that i blanched i basically placed it in boiling water for about 30 seconds and then shocked it in cold water and squeezed out any remaining liquid now i'm going to add two cloves of minced garlic I'm also going to be adding some spring onion that I chopped. The amount is up to you. I think this is a, probably somewhere between a quarter of a cup to a third cup of spring onion. And now I'm just going to add some salt to taste and sesame oil to taste. Now with clean hands, I'm going to give everything a really good mix. And you could also use a spoon or chopsticks to mix everything. So my spinach is done. I am going to set that aside and work on my next ingredient. And that is actually um, stir frying the carrots. You could add raw carrots if you like. I like to give it a quick stir fry with a little bit of salt just to season it and to sort of make it less raw if that makes any sense. But if you know, I don't think it'll hurt if you use raw matchstick carrots, but this is what I like to do. Okay, I let these saute for around a minute or so. Now I have three large eggs that I'm going to scramble and I'm going to basically just cook the egg like a, a pancake. And then I'm going to cut them into long strips. Again, we're following sort of the same uh, length as the roll because this is all going in the roll. So I'm going to carefully uh, cook this through. You can season it at this point. Um, I think I added salt when I was scrambling them. Just add salt to taste and just carefully start working the edges and eventually you're going to want to flip this over and i usually don't have the best of luck flipping it over with the spatula so i like to use a plate Now, there will be an overage of some of these ingredients. Sometimes I can get around six kimbap rolls, sometimes seven, but the overage, I actually like to just mix it in rice and eat it, or my husband does. So here are all the ingredients I'm using. Again, the radish, the ham, the cheese, the carrot, the egg, and the spinach. And here is my prepared seasoned rice. So I'm going to set up a station here and let me give this rice a mix by the way you sort of want to break it up a little bit it's easier to work with when you're putting it on your um, seaweed sheet and speaking of that i am going to be using some roasted seaweed sheets um, this is just a brand that we have and again it, they're cut in squares so they're the perfect size to make these rolls the rice goes on the rough side there's a smooth side and then there's a rough side you want to make sure you're working with the rough side so the little trick that I like to do when I'm working with rice is to use a rice paddle. I find it, I don't have to uh, wet my hands every time I make a roll. I don't have to put oil on them. And it helps keep the integrity of the sheet because one time I was doing this and I kept wetting my hands and it was actually uh, saturating the, the seaweed sheet and kind of making it difficult to roll up. So this is why I like to use a rice paddle, but you do what works best for you. So what I'm doing here is just spreading a thin layer of rice and I'm going to leave around an inch to maybe two inches at the bottom without rice. And um, then I'm going to start placing all of my ingredients.
Okay, so once I'm done making all of my rolls, I'm going to stop here just so I can show you. I ended up making around six, but here I have five and I just placed them on this little baking sheet. And I usually just cover this whole baking sheet with cling wrap and then I like to let them set in the fridge for at least 30 minutes before cutting. But for video purposes, I just want to show you what it looks like when it's cut. Now, before cutting, I like to oil my knife blade with some sesame oil, and that allows you to get cleaner cuts. So I do this for each cut because the rice is sticky. Now the end pieces, we actually fight over those. We love the end pieces, so someone will eat this right up. And now I'm just going to cut, and you can cut whichever width that you like. I like to do it on the thinner side because my kiddo Dax, he has a smaller mouth, <laughs> so it's easier for him to eat this when I pack him a lunch. I'd also like to mention that the measurements and ingredients will be located in the description below this video. So basically once I cut everything, we like to eat them with side dishes, but I want to show you sort of a back to school lunch idea for kids or adults. And again, the protein does not have to be ham and cheese. You can do ground beef, ground turkey, you can do steak. Sometimes I like to do a fusion of things and I will add avocado with like Tex-Mex fajita seasoned uh, beef skirt. It's really delicious. But here it is cut, and I think it looks absolutely pretty with all the colors. So now I'm going to show you how I like to pack this up for my kiddo. He loves kimbap for lunch, especially his ham and cheese. This was his request. So what I do is just slice it, pack it in a small container. And then what I do is I'll place just a frozen little ice pack at the bottom of his lunch kit. And then I'll place the kimbap the, in the container. And then he loves oranges, so I'll pack him some mandarin oranges and a spoon and a fork with his napkin. And that's it. With his bottled water, he is a happy boy. So I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.